Hello, everybody. Uh, this is a pretty interesting topic, uh, one that I started uh, studying uh, kind of a while ago um, and just been looking at uh, kind of the information over the past uh, few years. So uh, if this is your first time looking at the global flight map, uh, hopefully uh, you'll find it extremely interesting. I found it uh, very interesting. Uh, my first time looking at it. Uh, this is just one version of it. Uh, there's several different versions. Uh, this is another version here uh, called ADS, uh, but we're gonna primarily be using this one uh, tonight to look at everything. Uh, some of the really amazing things uh, was really that how many flights there are uh, in the United States and Europe uh, compared to the rest of the world. Um, I thought, um, you know, that it would actually be biased towards Asia. Um, but it's actually biased towards the United States. Um, and actually, there's very few flights uh, in Africa, uh, which was a really surprising uh, thing. Um, and also South America. Uh, so one thing I would really recommend uh, as you're studying this is uh, use it as the news source. Um, so, you know, there's obviously all these online uh, news aggregators, um, but sometimes... Uh, you can come in and look at some of these uh, weird flight paths and start to see uh, basically what's going on internationally uh, in terms of air traffic and also the news. Um, some uh, recent examples are just where people are flying over or where people are not flying over it can tell you a lot about what's happening. Um, so I wanted to kind of look at this uh, outside the United States. Uh, I'm pretty familiar with... Uh, what's going on in the United States, but I basically wanted to look in primarily Southeast Asia, uh, the Caribbean, Africa, uh, and also Europe, uh, just to get like a very uh, general perspective of what's going on. So you might want to download some of these maps uh, and try to uh, look at it with me. I saved a bunch of these images. Uh, you can go to the websites and just save the image and then start drawing on it. I used uh, GIMP here. Uh, to kind of see, uh, and I did this kind of at noon today, uh, and that's September 9th, uh, 2024. Um, but uh, the flight patterns have basically remained like this pretty consistently for the past five years or so that I've been looking at this. Um, there has been some pretty big changes uh, due to conflicts um, and some other things, and there's definitely some big changes I'd like to see uh, going on in Africa. And the other thing is uh, you can really use this uh, to help you understand uh, like how to do business uh, with different parts of the world um, and how to essentially understand uh, what's going on. So uh, one of the weird things are is that no matter where you live in the world, uh, if you want to travel somewhere else, oftentimes uh, the flight path will really change uh, your itinerary all of a sudden. Like you'll say, hey, <clears throat> I want to travel to uh, someplace in Europe or someplace in America or someplace in Asia. And there'll be a stopover uh, halfway there or just a different schedule that you might not expect um, that can actually really help you out. Um, for instance, um, I was wanting to travel back to Brazil to visit some friends down there. Um, and there's definitely different types of flights uh, to get to Brazil. So you could stop in Panama um, is one new way to do that. Uh, on the West Coast, a lot of people stop in Florida um, and different uh, or even in Houston and uh, Dallas. So there's a whole bunch of different routes to get there. Um, and oftentimes uh, it can be pretty fun uh, to reroute. Uh, your path uh, somewhere and learn about some other part of the world that you didn't quite expect it was actually on the way um, to where you're actually trying to get to. So I wasn't really sure what was going on. In some ways, this data is actually more trustworthy, but it didn't actually show a lot of the uh, data over the uh, oceans for some reason. So I wasn't sure uh, what was going on. Maybe there's some settings that I was missing. I was trying to get, I really like to have the uh, the colored earth version of the maps, not necessarily the political maps. Uh, but you can really see here uh, on this map in particular, I kind of grouped it into different sections, uh, but really how important this whole pathway is, uh, particularly in Asia, uh, heading through uh, Dubai and then India, and then really down through Singapore and then up through Hong Kong and then Shanghai and then Tokyo, Japan. 
Um, and then even down here, there's kind of a separate leg, which I didn't really mark, and I probably should, just because I thought it might get a little bit confusing uh, to do that. But that's basically Jakarta down there. Uh, and then there's definitely a lot of traffic going on in the Caribbean. So it's almost like there's more traffic in the Caribbean than there is all in Southeast Asia. But uh, that's kind of a debate um, to look at. So the numbers, uh, I was trying not to necessarily trust the numbers. For some reason, I'm just skeptical of that. Um, I wanted to kind of do my own uh, independent research and kind of see what the live tra traffic was. I was really surprised. Um, some airports said they're the busiest in the world. And then when I zoomed in on the live map, uh, there's like construction going on at the airport recently or there's some kind of I mean there was just yeah, there's no there's only a couple of flights going in and out so uh, it can really change uh, just due to the situation uh, and then also I looked at the population and I was surprised to see that the air traffic doesn't really follow the population lines and maybe in the future uh, that might be more of the case so there's definitely um, a lot of population in India and China as you can see and then even some stuff going all the way into Russia here. And then definitely in Africa, you can kind of see a very big difference between West Africa and East Africa and then North Africa. And then a huge difference in South America kind of with the population on the West Coast going to Colombia. And then I was really surprised to see all the new traffic, air traffic in Mexico and Central America. So I think that would be a really interesting area to look at. Um, and then particularly surprised. Um, just how much traffic is going on um, in France, Amsterdam, Italy. Uh, as I kind of zoomed in on some of these, I was very surprised. There's different ways to look at the flight population map. And maybe I even messed this up a little bit. But uh, there's just different colors. And you can kind of see uh, maybe, maybe there might be uh, more relationships between, for example, uh, New Delhi in the future and Beijing. And Shanghai and, and this kind of thing particularly in Asia and there's definitely a traffic path here uh, kind of going Japan Taiwan Manila and so on so the futuristic traffic map may look very different um, so here's kind of the zoomed in version of America uh, and the reason that I wanted to look at this in particular is that I kind of want to look at I mean this is pretty obvious that you're gonna have a lot of internal traffic but I kind of wanted to see what was going on at the border so it's really surprising how many people are traveling to Hawaii um, and then even here this is kind of heading over to Japan and Southeast Asia uh, so it's actually way more traffic to Europe uh, and along the East Coast so basically that may really surprise you I live on the West Coast I always think of it as big cities here but really uh, the East Coast is huge and you can kind of see down here in Caribbean it gets pretty complicated so it's not uh, in the United States, it's just extremely complicated. There's just tons of traffic. Um, but now here you can start to see some of the stuff down in Mexico uh, that I was talking about. I was really surprised to see the temperature. I, I don't know. The nighttime temperature was like 66 degrees the other day in Mexico City. Uh, and I was like, man, it's really warm up here in the north. And it's actually cooler down in Mexico City. So there's actually quite a lot of mountain ranges here um, and even Bogota and Colombia was like 60, 50 degrees even. And that's almost right on the equator because they're up in the mountains. So there's a lot of like weird places uh, that you may travel to, uh, particularly down here because there's mountain ranges uh, and some cities that you might not expect uh, to be down there. So, but in general, a lot of that is still heading, it's so biased here. So you can see there's huge amounts of traffic heading into Colombia. Uh, and then Lima uh, as well. So a lot of the flights uh, when I flew um, down to South America actually stop halfway because it's such a long flight. Um, it's it's a terribly long flight. Um, but here you can see Sao Paulo kind of really, and Brazil kind of taking up a huge amount of that traffic. Um, it's just unbelievable to see that. Um, it's pretty surprising. So Africa, it's just, I don't know what's going on, but there's just not a lot of flights. So I think part of the problem is that uh, in Nigeria, a lot of these flights are actually going to Europe, uh, whereas they probably should be going to other parts of Africa or even Asia or South America. So you'll notice there's not a whole lot of traffic. There's no airplanes in this region heading into Brazil uh, over to West Africa. That's kind of mysterious, whereas all that is kind of going through Europe 
Um, so that was kind of a surprise. Um, and it's like many times less traffic in Africa. So there's huge changes. And if you look at the main map, there's no reason why Africa shouldn't have like as much traffic as Dubai, right? Because it's basically a good halfway point uh, between Asia and South America, right? And so a lot of the uh, new development projects and things uh, that you're, if you're looking at stuff going on around the world, um, all the new bridges, airports, construction, that's all kind of happening in Africa and South America. Um, and they've kind of uh, hit a peak in growth in particularly in china um and also the rest of southeast asia but they're starting to change some things about that so there's still a lot of growth everywhere but uh let's move on for a second i really want to focus primarily on this african map um but if you really wanted to study some of the new details uh, it's really exciting to zoom in and find out what kind of aircraft they're using a lot of times they're using older aircrafts in africa uh like you know, just like retired aircraft from other countries. So it's really interesting to find out about how they do air traffic, particularly in Africa. So here you can see uh, it's really surprising how much that new shape is kind of heading down to South America. So actually, probably uh, Europe thinks more about South America um, than maybe even America does. Uh, at least from the air traffic here, it looks like it's pretty heavily biased here. And then you can kind of see that there's two main routes here. Um, I was really surprised to see this Cairo route. So basically, um, you know, while there's not a whole lot of traffic in Africa, Cairo is definitely part of Africa. And that actually is not true in North Africa with <clears throat> Cairo being a pretty big exception to that. So it's, it's really heavily, <clears throat> you can see there's a definite traffic pattern there and kind of missing Iran here ironically so the traffic kind of going off the edge here <clears throat> and avoiding certain kinds of airspace um, and and again India with all the population you'd really expect there to be a lot more um, <clears throat> people flying there um, so you can kind of see some of those pathways um, now when I studied the details in India I was shocked as well as in Pakistan um, a lot of it is through the capital so Whereas um, in the United States, um, you know, they fly through San Francisco, New York City, Miami, Dallas. Washington, D.C. doesn't show up as the number one busiest. But certainly in China and Asia, a lot of that is actually becoming pretty political uh, traffic. Like it basically goes to and from the capitals. So you notice all throughout Asia, um, you're basically flying to and from the capitals of various countries um, in Asia, whereas that won't happen uh, as much in the United States, um, like people don't quite realize that. So, um, but basically there's a huge bias, um, here and then also towards Dubai, right? So it just, everything kind of comes in and out of Dubai here. Um, some of that is because of the fuel costs and the other thing is because it's kind of a good halfway point. So if you look at here, um, basically what's going on is Asians will fly here and then stop in Dubai and then do another stop <clears throat> before they go over to uh, New York or the East Coast here. Um, so oftentimes, uh, Dubai is kind of an interesting uh, resting point. So uh, other things that I really thought were interesting is that as you zoom in and you study all these major cities, uh, essentially these cities are so large in Asia that sometimes they have two, three, four major airports all within the city. So New York already has about two or even three airports with the city. Like there's another airport in New Jersey. So basically there's three airports, uh, major airports in New York. And that's already what you see in Shanghai um, and uh, other areas. So and kind of the peak rate is that they, they essentially have th 200 to 300 flights per day to each of the major cities. So uh, so if you think about it, um, you know, Shanghai uh, to Beijing may have a few hundred flights per day to each of these major cities. Uh, and that kind of builds up to a few thousand flights uh, per airport. So there's quite a number of flights at each one of these major airports. And we'll kind of go into some of that detail here in a moment. Uh, but I wanted to kind of get um, through these here. So here you can see Singapore uh, and Manila. So I was really surprised I didn't really know anything uh, until I started to really study it 
carefully up. But basically Singapore and Manila, but particularly Manila is a kind of surprise. Jakarta, um, there's just so much air traffic there that it almost doesn't even show up. <clears throat> Um, a lot of that also heading out to Bali um, and some other areas. So there's some unexpected airports um, in Southeast Asia. And you'll see that it's definitely kind of closer to the land, whereas in the Caribbean, it's kind of like hits air almost everywhere. Um, so uh, that's actually a question for population uh, being interesting. Uh, maybe too much population uh, in the Caribbean relative to on Southeast Asia. So a lot of times I've been studying this and looking at the various population questions, uh, particularly on those islands and these remote areas and uh, for wildlife and all that. And it seems like it actually might be more of a Caribbean problem. So <clears throat> here you can kind of see how this whole, because the earth is basically a sphere. A lot of these flights will actually go almost over the North Pole. In fact, in fact some of them actually do go over the North Pole if you go out to San Francisco. Uh, and further out, but you can kind of see this blue line here, um, and then the, the more of a traditional path when you're heading directly to New York. Um, some of these are also on the uh, west coast. Um, and then here you can kind of see, there's actually so much fewer traffic uh, across the Pacific Ocean. You can see how much huge Hawaii is. I was very surprised to see that. Um, and uh, a lot of it does depend on the time of day, so this is actually, kind of a nighttime map um, that we are looking at here. Let me reload this up again so you can see. Um, so basically one was done at 12 noon and this is here about 9 p.m. Um, so we're basically getting the tail end. We're starting to build up heavily here. You can see in uh, Japan especially. So uh, that kind of shows up there. Um, and here is a map of all of the major airports. So there's actually major airports and then there's also kind of like sub major airports, which I think I have a diagram of. I thought I did. Hmm, where is that? Anyway, so I have two actually diagrams for you. Um, oh yeah, this is the, uh, where is it? It's around here somewhere. So, uh, but basically to start with, you wanna look at the major airports and you can kind of see there's different regions here. Um, it doesn't quite match up uh, to what you might expect and particularly uh, when you look at the population maps, you start to see there's kind of almost airport networks. Particularly in East Africa, you'll start to see there's kind of some crosses there. And then you kind of see along the West Coast here. Um, let me highlight that in a different color so it's kind of easier to understand. Uh, let's do this in blue. Um, so you can basically see, let's oh, merge down the layer, sorry about this. Um, so basically there's kind of a difference in some of these regions, right? You have these weird, uh, pockets like here in northern india there's kind of like no airports no major airports in the center part of india where there is a kind of a chain of airports in northern india and that's mainly due to the population so you can see these are kind of like the population maps um, on the graph here and you can kind of see there's kind of a separate grouping here uh, and so on so uh, some of that may actually change a lot so uh, you know these are kind of considered european islands whereas Actually, they're maybe more African related uh, when you look at the airport chains. So that's not cr quite what's happening right now uh, with the flight patterns, but maybe in the future. Uh, and then here you can kind of see all this stuff in Australia. And I think I even missed New Zealand on this map, uh, but New Zealand is a very busy area. Uh, and one thing you may want to look at carefully is this pattern of this cyclical stuff. So this is actually every week. So even throughout the week, uh, different days of the week may be way better to fly on and cheaper. So you may want to try to study that. I have some graphs uh, there. And then I wanted to compare the Caribbean, uh, particularly with uh, Southeast Asia and Oceania. So you can kind of see there's some definitely stuff going on through Panama here. A lot of traffic here in, in Colombia, not so much happening in Venezuela. Um, and maybe part of that is just due to the current political situation, but certainly huge amounts of traffic to Puerto Rico and even more traffic heading into Central America and kind of this new Cancun, Mexico kind of pathway um, that you see here. Um, and it's just really cheap flights starting to show up. And this is all, a lot of this is going to Miami. And one of the questions is that, uh, should that actually be rerouted to Cuba? or what's kind of the future of that on, in terms of 
flight traffic. So kind of some interesting discussions there. And actually, it's way more busy in Southeast Asia. So as I zoomed in, uh, again, this was around, taken around noon. Um, we could probably zoom in and see what it looks like right now. Uh, but you will see it kind of does change quite a bit throughout the day. And it actually, as you zoom in, <clears throat> there's far more. And look at Hong Kong and this map, right? So this is just starting to be a prime hour for Hong Kong. And man, is that just getting smashed. So the part of the reason here is you have Shenzhen and you have Hong Kong Airport. Let's, let's even zoom in to look at what's going on in Hong Kong right now because that's so extraordinary amount of traffic. Uh, but you can see there's quite a number of big airports coming in here. And uh, so actually Guangzhou here and Shenzhen. And actually, I think in some, some senses, Shenzhen is actually even busier than Hong Kong. And you can see um, collectively, uh, there's probably even more airplanes. And then Macau has a big airport here too. Um, so it doesn't look so bad. Um, but as you zoom out, you can start to see um, some of that other stuff. Uh, particularly here in Taipei, Taiwan, um, and Manila. Uh, but uh, as you try to travel outside of some of the major areas, you start to notice uh, which airports are going to be pretty vital. Um, and it's kind of a cross between where a busy airport is and then the price also becomes a major factor. Um, in Southeast Asia, uh, so like you could land in Singapore, but it's far more expensive in Singapore than it is in Bangkok. So you may try to actually fly to Bangkok as opposed to Singapore. And then even in Singapore, there's Kuala Lumpur, which is cheaper than Singapore. So a lot of people may fly there. And then finally, uh, Manila still is kind of, uh, flights are still uh, reasonably priced. For internationally and uh, there's a it's just a little bit difficult to get from the airport uh, to downtown Manila it's kind of located a little bit in a weird area uh, and there's actually some safety questions in Manila uh, because of the poverty and some other questions like that and that actually is influencing Jakarta and some other areas um, and actually that starts to be uh, just a whole different question uh, traveling into the Philippines and they've actually devastated a lot of these islands. There's just a huge amount of traffic, boat traffic, airplane traffic. It's really is very vital uh, to keep the water clean here in the Philippines and they are growing super fast. As you can see, there's a lot of flights there. Uh, and then all along Vietnam, there's just huge, there's totally new tourist attractions and places to work along the coast of Vietnam uh, from Ho Chi Minh City, Da Nang, uh, and then Hanoi up here, um, and just working with Bangkok, and then Cambodia is a whole new, new area also, uh, and then just all along the coast. So there's just huge amounts of different areas, um, including Hong Kong here, um, but it gets quite pricey. Um, it's actually starting to get pretty pricey um, in a lot of places in China. So something to think about. I'm gonna pause this for a second. So let's just look at overall what's going on. So some things that may surprise you, the world's busiest airport is actually Atlanta. Um, that completely surprised me uh, as well. Um, one of the reasons is because it's not just, this is actually airport passenger traffic, but a lot of times they put cargo underneath as well as luggage. So, and actually Atlanta is also very busy for cargo as well as just a good port. So <clears throat> it's really important to understand Atlanta uh, in the United States. I, I was really surprised when I first came across that information. Uh, but as you see, we're starting to get towards way late night time here. So this is actually after midnight and a lot of flights will just stop. So it wasn't really a very good uh, picture there. Let me see if I can get um, a better picture here. So on this, you can kind of see down into Atlanta, which is right here. Um, basically, that's being a heaviest spot right around here. So that's basically Atlanta. Uh, so basically, that's the world's busiest location. Um, so it's kind of surprising. Uh, there's a couple factors that may be so not only for shipping, uh, that's also Alaska is very busy for shipping as well because they oftentimes stop uh, between China uh, and Alaska. So for the West Coast and as well as Los Angeles being a very busy shipping port. So, but 
uh, from this data, basically Atlanta is number one. So you may want to look carefully at what's going on uh, in Atlanta. And I'll just put a, let me see if I can merge this down. I probably, there we go, I'll put a little blue marking on that. Um, the next big airport that you really should know about is Dubai. And there's just so many factors there um, to think about. Uh, so on this global map, Basically, it's a good halfway point. Also, oil is pretty cheap in this region. So I'll do a big circle around here because it's shocking um, how many flights will go through Dubai. Um, and there's actually quite a number of airports uh, in that region, but yet Dubai gets a lot of that traffic. So something to for sure look into. Um, it's just so hot in Dubai. So even in the summer um, or winter, it can be you know 100 degrees plus. So I'm a little bit skeptical for how long that will happen. I'm really looking forward to actually East Africa, Kampala. Right now, most of the flights are actually going into Nigeria um, and then also <coughs> South Africa in Africa, but as a good halfway point um, because a lot of people in the future may not uh, be traveling the same way that they used to, um, particularly in Africa and South America. Um, essentially, <coughs> my hope is that um, <clears throat> a lot of that traffic between uh, essentially Rio de Janeiro and some of that East African as well as uh, Nigeria, Ghana in particular, Accra looks like it's a little bit far. It's very close to jungle here. So actually Accra becomes a very important city as well as Dakar, Senegal. Um, but there's also another jungle area right in here um, that I mentioned the other day to watch out for. So let me just circle those in red so you can see highlight these major jungle areas <clears throat> that we kind of want to be careful about. Um, and <clears throat> of course, there's the Caribbean as well. And I'll even do that in a dark red uh, to make it really obvious. So there's just different concerns uh, for wildlife around the world. So <clears throat> that hopefully will make that pretty obvious. Um, so kind of avoiding some of the traffic in some of these regions, um, we probably need to be uh, extra careful uh, in the Caribbean as we would in Southeast Asia as well as in the jungle. Um, so <clears throat> Brazil is kind of actually biased towards Sao Paulo already and Rio de Janeiro. So it doesn't have the same problem that um, Uganda would have or Rwanda would have. And it's just the wildlife questions are very serious, both in Rio de Janeiro uh, because they do have a lot of monkeys there surprisingly um, and there's a lot of wildlife actually in Rio as much as the jungle as uh, in terms of wildlife diversity so I was surprised to see that um, but going back to the the Dubai thing so Dallas is also another interesting point to look at so <clears throat> I was surprised on that as well um, so on this map, you can see um, basically what's going on. Dallas is probably right around in here, <clears throat> for example. Um, a lot of flights will actually stop in Dallas and then head on to the Caribbean or even South America. Um, so they'll kind of route through Texas or Florida. So it's actually becoming, um, because of Mexico uh, and Central America, um, a lot of people uh, do fly <clears throat> kind of around the bout. Um, and there is kind of some new uh, low cost uh, areas to live and work, um, particularly along this region right in here. So <clears throat> let me do that in green, uh, just because that's kind of a new <clears throat> area. Um, so this area in particular, <clears throat> as well as all along here, <clears throat> um, in East Africa, kind of it's just south Southeast Africa, um, is some very new farmland um, as well as some new frontiers. Some of the fastest growing cities in all of Africa, for example, Dar es Salaam, which is actually further up north here, I should probably draw that <coughs> there, um, is growing very fast. Um, and there's just huge amounts of farmland uh, available that isn't quite next to the jungle, which is very wise. So it helps uh, kind of uh, thinking about that kind of stuff. Let me see this. Sorry about this. Um, so. Dallas, the main point there to make is that it's basically these halfway point cities, just like we had um, for um, basically Dubai, right? Right in here, I think it was uh, kind of a good halfway point. Um, they're actually using this because uh, it's just an American city. And so sometimes they'll stop here in Dallas. 
uh, and then further go down into South America. So um, it's actually, uh, you know, there's a lot of new uh, space launch facilities down in Texas um, and <clears throat> just a whole lot of stuff going on there. So a lot of people, uh, including myself, haven't really looked at it just because it's so hot in the summertime. Um, so London is also a big surprise. Um, <clears throat> I just was surprised how dependent so many people are on London uh, internationally for business and work. So there are so many places to go around the entire world, and yet you can kind of sense there is <clears throat> definitely a bias. And here's an example, extremely high rent, extremely high cost of living <clears throat> in the United States and in Tokyo. So many of these top airports in the world are really servicing you know, the top 5% of people around the world and not really giving us a very good picture. It's only <clears throat> on the later half of this that you start to get <clears throat> lower cost cities. Um, I mean, none of the vacation spots that I would check out or places that I'd want to work with are actually on the top here, but um, <clears throat> there's just so much money. So a lot of this money question <clears throat> basically needs to go this way. Um, and the question is, really in particular what to do about Africa's right so um, there's like no flights on this entire list there's like 50 some places that are at the top airports for passenger traffic nothing even Sao Paulo is on here um, so so that shows South America but <clears throat> Africa is not listed at all so a lot of this uh, wealth transfer definitely needs to be thought of and that's where basically some of these maps particularly this one that we looked at uh, down here in East Africa, um, and then also this area here, <coughs> wow, excuse me, is becoming huge. Um, and I would even look at, I'm gonna do this in a light blue, uh, because it's just different culture along Chile, right? So you basically have that, uh, and then even Norway and up in here um, is kind of changing, and you see Alaska here, and a lot of that is actually freight traffic. So uh, it's just so dangerous with the earthquakes. There's so many different factors uh, to think about um, when working with people around the world um, and looking for places um, to travel to. Um, but I always think of it as a one-way trip. Uh, so if you are thinking of going somewhere, definitely think about it like as a forever trip. Um, I wasn't, <laughs> I'm still dealing with stuff uh, you know, from decades before of traveling down to South America. I still have friends down there and it still really hurts very bad because I haven't seen them in many, many years and just what to do about that whole situation. So <clears throat> it's definitely important to take it very seriously um, no matter where you travel to. So um, some other weird things. Uh, so you'll see a lot of these are halfway points. LA is not, but Chicago is for sure. So Chicago shows up here, New Delhi shows up, France, uh, and then you see Guangzhou. So Guangzhou is actually not uh, Hong Kong. That was that that was that was major busyness that we saw earlier <clears throat> on the map. So we saw like the nighttime, daytime, it actually transferred quite a bit. This map actually was a little bit more accurate. <clears throat> and I think if we go back here to Asia, we're starting to see the uh, whole different traffic map. Uh, but wow, look at Tokyo and Japan, Osaka, really starting to fill in on this map. So <clears throat> it is important to use both parts of the day. So we're actually nighttime here, so we're starting to be daytime. Uh, and <clears throat> actually going back to the original discussion that we had on this, uh, so if you're looking for work and you're looking to try to uh, get to know some people in different parts of the world, uh, just click on any one of these airplanes uh, and I'll show you the traffic. Um, it's actually kind of hilarious uh, to zoom in. I did this in San Francisco, uh, but I'll do this in Osaka just because I like Osaka a little bit more than Tokyo. Uh, <clears throat> it's a little bit uh, more friendly of a city, in my opinion, uh, for uh, locals. <clears throat> and so you can kind of see. Uh, so here's their airport <clears throat> in Osaka, um, but they definitely have an airport over here <clears throat> and over here. But this looks like their major busy airport, but it can be really hilarious just to watch this live uh, and kind of click like this guy right here is taking off and he's Jeju Island. So 
that are heading to different places. Um, so you can kind of like watch it and then imagine, you know, if you were sitting on this airplane, okay, you're a Japanese person, probably maybe, you know, uh, some of these will be coming in from New York or uh, Europe, <clears throat> different parts of the world. Uh, and you can kind of just think at a different part of the day if you're trying to do uh, work or get to know some people, uh, use that kind of as a guide. <clears throat> And then even look at some of these incomings. So here's an incoming. Uh, looks like that's coming from Shanghai. So looks like uh, Osaka and Shanghai are directly related there for both work, pleasure, and all kinds of things. So uh, definitely try to take a look at some of those and you'll really be surprised uh, using that as your new source uh, because you'll say, hey, it's uh, nine o'clock. The, the flight is landing at eight o'clock or seven o'clock in the morning. Looks like those people are probably just all coming into work uh, in that new part of the world. So there's certain really interesting things about that. And then even some of these weird flights, I've learned so much um, <clears throat> from studying some of the off the beaten path flights um, because it definitely tells you uh, about uh, tourism uh, to weird islands and just a whole different type of uh business philosophy and philosophy about how the world works. Um, yes, most people are flying between America, basically the East Coast and Europe, um, but there's whole different other philosophies out there of what's been going on. So definitely recommend um, taking a look at all of those. Uh, let's see if we've missed anything else on this that you may be interested in. So like I live out on the West Coast uh, near Seattle. And you can see uh, basically San Francisco airport um, and those are actually very busy airports together, um, but they're actually quite lower here compared to Shanghai, Beijing, uh, Guangdong, um, and even Miami. So uh, there's actually a lot of uh, stuff going on for tourism um, and not just business. So some of these airports um, <coughs> are more pure business airports. Uh, some of our mixture between business <clears throat> and uh, pleasure, but what you'll find um, is find an airport that you really think is interesting. Madrid is a terrible example. Um, <clears throat> I cannot stand it. Um, it's actually kind of like not near the ocean. It's like really, could be really hot, um, but <clears throat> different airports here, <clears throat> excuse me, you should definitely look into and see um, what might be super interesting to you. I'll be right back. I'm going to try to get a glass of water here. So, yeah, I kind of want to close this conversation more on a spiritual concept and uh, looking for <clears throat> maybe like super interesting destinations uh, around the world and really fun places to work with. Um, so, for instance, I've been doing a lot of studies in East Africa as well as West Africa <clears throat> and then also looking all throughout the Caribbean and Southeast Asia. Uh, one thing you may want to do <clears throat> um, is look at an airport uh, very carefully. Um, <clears throat> what I mean by that is like what we did over there in Japan. Um, so uh, <clears throat> uh, some surprising things um, that you may find are actually in Southeast Asia um, and also East Africa. So you'll see here, um, like Kuala Lumpur actually becomes an interesting alternative to Singapore. Um, and you may want to um, click on the airport and find out where the cheapest flights are. Um, and the way to do that basically is this. Um, you click down here with more, um, open it into a new link, and it will show you the top flights. So here you can see they have almost 300 flights to Singapore. But actually, it's Jakarta, right? So their number one flight, <clears throat> so you actually may be able to get very low-cost flights to Jakarta. Here you have another city um, and another city, Penang. These are mostly internals, but some of them will be international flights. Um, so you'll notice Bangkok, there's an international flight there. So actually, that one might be pretty cheap uh, to go to. So, um, so basically, what I'm saying is that... Um, Rather than flying directly to Singapore, um, there are some other options. And you actually get more lightning if you're interested in studying lightning. You get more lightning over in this area than you do down in Singapore. Um, so, <clears throat> um, and actually hotels can be cheaper up in Kuala Lumpur as well. And then even up here, um, you get up into Phuket, Thailand. 
Um, so this is a very one of the world's busiest airports that a lot of people don't know about is right here. Um, <clears throat> and if you do that same thing for Phuket, uh, you'll see <clears throat> some mysterious uh, airports. So I think this is uh, one of these is Dinsbar. Um, but so you have New Delhi here. So Bangkok being a very busy point. There's actually two different Bangkok airports. There's this one and this one. So collectively about 300 flights. And then Singapore here. So again, Singapore being huge, uh, but Kuala Lumpur actually showing up again here. Um, so about the same number of flights between Singapore and Kuala Lumpur. So that's just something you might want to do. <clears throat> I had some uh, pretty fun time uh, just watching the air traffic and also just studying <clears throat> what's going on for different places. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, so another place in East Africa, I'll just go over there because I have some friends. <clears throat> Who might be interested so you'll see um, basically <clears throat> this is Dar es Salaam so a lot of people are coming in through there and then Mombasa so you'll actually <clears throat> although you could fly directly into Nairobi uh, it might be nicer to fly into Mombasa because it's right on the coastline um, as well as Kampala has a couple different options uh, for the airport there um, so uh, but basically it could be safer and it's not as jungly and there's just a lot of reasons um, to look at some other airports so you may want to look at that um, because this actually becomes very complicated in africa because there's so few flights and actually the price of the flights are actually very expensive so to get to africa can cost you more than get to getting to asia <coughs> um, <coughs> just because there's so few flights going in and out of africa um, so it may be really helpful. Um, and actually, there's a big surprise is in Johannesburg. So it's actually kind of the big hub. Like you'll see so many flights going in and out of Johannesburg rather than Cape Town. So <clears throat> and that's because of the electricity, the mining industry, and a whole bunch of other reasons. Um, but uh, also, uh, passports are not always easy to get, uh, even it, for American or European, for Nigeria. Um, it can be difficult. Um, there can be different kinds of problems, um, and um, it's just different in general. So uh, it does take a lot of work to go through and kind of study what's going on in Africa and in South America and Caribbean and Southeast Asia, but it's certainly way more interesting than looking like at a flight in and out of Amsterdam all the time. Um, there's a lot more um, just different kinds of environmental factors. Um, but um, let's just go to Amsterdam really quick uh, because we mentioned it. So you can see so many of these flights kind of heading right in here into the Netherlands. Um, it turns out that actually Paris is the busier one. Um, but as you look at it, it's actually kind of separated right into here, uh, Belgium and Amsterdam in particular. I wanted to look at because it's right on the waterfront. Um, so I have some of my own personal bias here. Sorry. Uh, but... Uh, here's the airport so you can kind of see here's downtown Amsterdam and then their major airport um, so let's just look at this really quickly um, to see so uh, and another thing that you can do and I'm sorry to do this uh, is you can click on all routes and it's kind of interesting I don't think they did this right it's not the way I would have done it but I would have done it kind of like on a heat map and unfortunately they don't do that they just show the routes they don't show the number of routes uh, sorry it takes a little while to load this but you have to do this and unfortunately it will show you all the routes um so you'll see okay yeah they're flying to south africa and different parts of africa this is going to be a major i mean compared to some airports you're not going to see all this traffic um but there's definitely a lot of airports that are missing from this so and that's part of the problem you may have to check a different airport in the region um, that will fly directly to where you're trying to go. Um, the reason I don't really like this map is it, it only shows you the route, doesn't show you the frequencies. Um, so it'd be nice to see the frequencies on that. Um, so you kind of have to do that through this other tab here. But uh, anyway, so let's zoom out one more time um, and just make sure we're not missing anything here. Uh, this is becoming late at night for Europe, uh, so they will close a lot of the airports after midnight just because of sound and noise. Um, so it's not the same type of traffic, certainly. Um, and another big surprise is in Italy um, and also Greece. There's just uh, some chaos that starts to happen 
right in here. Uh, that's because there's so many islands and just weird airports um, in general. So uh, following these flight paths um, can be very interesting, but it's also a good idea to get uh, studying all that other stuff. Um, the other thing I really wanted to look carefully at is kind of this mysterious land zone. So uh, you have these almost these weird eyes. You basically have the, the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. Um, we've kind of been, I've been kind of discussing this uh, spiritually, uh, what this might mean uh, to have these different lakes. And so there's this kind of this chain of lakes that heads all the way out here. And this Lake Bacall is actually has more water in it. Uh, than all the Great Lakes combined. So take Lake Michigan, uh, where I'm from, and all the other lakes, and basically this one lake has more. So, uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, you may want to just try to take a look at all that, and there's some really interesting flights through here um, that you'll notice. So uh, some of these weird areas, um, I actually discovered a flight going over the North Pole, um, and just some really, really interesting stuff. So you may uh, wanna look at that kind of stuff carefully, um, as well as some of these off the beaten path um, flights, particularly like we mentioned um, over in Africa and um, Caribbean and Central America. So anyway, so I hope you've had a fun time looking at all of this. Um, there's certainly a lot of different flights out there. Um, it's really shocking to see the patterns uh, and some of the new areas that you may be able to find a um, cheap flight to. Um, I highly recommend never taking a flight simply because it's cheap. I accidentally did that once um, and I ended up kind of in a dangerous country and not really in a good situation at all um, just because they lowered the cost of the flights. I don't want to really explain where this was, but um, I would recommend um, basically making friends and going to places together uh that's where i've had the most fun is going with friends uh to different places um and also trying to think about work um how to find convert any one of these flights into a, a work project um so you don't even actually have to fly there um, a lot of times people that fly often hate flying um, and it can be more fun uh, to just figure out one of these flights uh, and then study it and kind of imagine if you were on the airplane uh, what you might be doing or why you'd be doing that flight. Uh, so that's some area to check out. Um, and then also the future of flights. So kind of like I know a couple of people that are starting to be in the travel agency business um, and they're starting to like help book tickets for different kinds of people. Um, you may look at the population map carefully and kind of map that together uh, with the flight map. Um, so there's different types of population maps. Um, and then that can kind of give you some guidelines uh, to what to do. So uh, a lot of these areas, um, if there is a lot of flights there, it could be easier to ship things. Uh, if you're trying to ship clothing or food or different types of items or you're doing business with different places around the world, uh, definitely studying the flight map can help a lot uh, to see um, what you might want to do. So. Uh, and <laughs> there is a whole lot of weird things going on. So, and then as you get into South America and Africa, some of those lines become a little bit weird. They still show up. And there's gonna be totally new cities uh, that I never knew about that are just massive cities, sometimes uh, ma many millions of people, um, gigantic skyscrapers, um, and just totally weird uh, cities that are really awesome um, around the world. So. Um, that probably no one's ever even heard of sometimes. So, uh, uh, and then Europe uh, definitely um, actually is pretty, it's pretty straightforward to understand because there's so many aircraft, you start to see these uh, patterns uh, in what's going on. So, uh, and then here again, you can kind of see some of these main hubs. Uh, and then Australia is a topic that we didn't really talk about too much as well as New Zealand. I think it was off the map a couple times, um, but it's definitely worthwhile checking out some of those remote areas um anyway so i hope you've had fun uh understanding all of these different flight things uh text message me send me a message uh, let me know what you're trying to do uh, in terms of work or um, just having fun um, making friends all over the world is definitely really fun and i recommend uh trying to see uh what you can do all right see you later have a nice day
So again, uh, no matter where you are in the world, uh, North in the United States, South America, Africa, Europe, Asia, um, it's all about trying to work together um, and figure out using this kind of map um, to see what we can do to uh, essentially work together So uh, and make friends and solve different kinds of problems. So, um, you know, some of the most, most of the wealth uh, is probably going through this air traffic map. Um, and so it's something to think about um, because maybe this map is not how it actually should look. Um, although a lot of the wealth is in North America and Europe, there's way other places to travel to that could be really fun. Um, so uh, it's not always exactly what you think. Anyway, see you later. Have a nice night.